Yeah, I don't think we should be too worried. As I said, um, when I look at these challenges, you know, high oil prices, high inflation, low GDP, we, we've seen these before. Um, you know, so I think airline management teams know what will be necessary going into this period. It's a, a very different challenge to what we witnessed in 2020 with the almost total collapse of uh, um, flying. You know, we go back to May 2020, um, the passenger OPKs were down 95% versus the, the previous year. So what we're looking at now is a period of slower economic growth. Obviously, the, the unknown bit, which we're alluded to, was uh, what happens with China. You know, when uh, does China start to reopen, or does China start to reopen? Um, I think most people have an expectation that that will happen in 2023. Uh, you know, we're seeing some signs of a relaxation in some areas of the uh, restrictions there. Uh, so I think, given that we're still in recovery, uh, you know, recovering much of the uh, international, um, well, domestic markets have almost fully recovered, but international markets still have scope to recover. I, I think airline management teams should be reasonably optimistic about the outlook for uh, 2023. It's still going to be a challenging uh, period, and you know, nowhere close to where we were in uh, the period between 2010 and uh, 2019. But I think there are uh, positives there. As Barry uh, said, the economic environment is probably uh, the area where most people will express some concern. And uh, if anything, there's probably more risk on that side than, than there is upside. Uh, but as I said, uh, from an industry point of view, we are uh, forecasting um, profitability in 2023 with a, a number of regions joining North America in terms of profit. So, you know, my view is, um, you know, let's, let's look at the positives, uh, recognize that we're gonna have to work hard, recognize that decisions will need to be a little bit more cautious than maybe uh, they would have been. And, uh, you know, recovering networks, uh, given the uncertainty in some markets, uh, clearly will be something that a, a lot of airline management teams will be focused on. But interestingly, uh, you know, we, we have, I had a board of governors meeting last week. One of the areas uh, of concern that was expressed by uh, a number of the airline CEOs was the availability of uh, spare parts, both uh, airframe and engine, and how that might uh, impact on their ability to add additional capacity in 2023. Now, we were aware of disruption to supply chains uh, during this year. We highlighted that on a number of occasions. Uh, but the degree to which uh, the CEOs around the table express concern about their availability of uh, parts, uh, I think particularly um, engine uh, parts, uh, was something that uh, um, didn't surprise me, but I, I think the scale of it uh, certainly uh, was a lot worse than, than I had uh, realized. So that's something we'll be keeping an eye on as we go through uh, the early part of 2023, because it would be a shame to see our ability to recover impacted by uh, external factors like that, in the same way as our ability to recover during 2022 was impacted by uh, a number of key airports not being able to cope with the increase in passenger movement. Okay. Um, well, you mentioned airports, and one of the um, concerns we had in 2022 was airports that were looking at raising their charges to airlines. And when you look into 2023, you see a very large revenue number and a very large cost number and not much in between. Are you concerned that some of our partners might want to uh, add some cost to the industry? Yeah, well, they're not our partners, let's be clear. You know, we, we've, um, we're in the airline industry, they're in the airport industry. They, the objectives that they have are, are different to us. And I am deeply concerned, you know, when you, you look uh, at the profit that we're forecasting, we're, we're talking about a little over a dollar per passenger based on the number of passengers that we expect to fly globally. One dollar per passenger profit. You know, and airports are looking to increase their charges, in some cases by ridiculous amounts, you know, way in excess of that. Even those that are sort of believing that they're being good are increasing the uh, charges by well over uh, a dollar per passenger. And even in the best period, to go back to that, 10 year period 2010 to 2019, uh, you know, the industry on average made a, a profit of uh, just over $10 per passenger. 
in the best period of the industry with net margins of 5.4%. Uh, so, you know, costs are a critical issue for all airlines. And at a time like recovery, with profit margins so slim, on top of the significant damage that was done to balance sheets through 2020, 2021, and indeed parts of 2022, it's very important that uh, everybody understands just how uh, fragile the, the recovery is. Yes, we're recovering. Yes, the momentum is improving. Yes, we expect it to continue to improve in 2023. But the margins we're operating with are very, very small. And we cannot tolerate a situation where airports in particular attempt to gouge airlines and their passengers by significant increase in, in airport charges. Every single cent matters to our members. Every single cent should be of concern to anybody looking at this industry and we should not allow our ports uh, to get away with the uh, significant increases that they're, uh, they're aiming for. Thank you.